I literally never thought I was going to have to say this, but uh, the lead designer of Metroid Prime 1, 2, and 3, he's wrong. Let's get into it. Yeah, I know, no sort of comedy skit or funny intro this time because I'm actually a little confused on why this is becoming a breaking story today. So here's the thing. There's always things going out there, always rumors, reports, all that jazz. Uh, there's always news happening, and it's actually been a bit dry for Nintendo. I think we are in the calm before the E3 storm, right? We're about to get Nintendo announcing E3 plans here in the next week or two. So there's a little bit of a calm in the news. You know, Nintendo announced that Garage game, and now it's going to be kind of silence, I think, for a little while, until probably around the time that Miitomo comes out. Or Miitopia, sorry. I don't know why I always confuse those two games. Anyways, by the time Miitopia comes out. But here's the thing. Uh, the lead uh, designer for the original Metroid Prime trilogy, all three games, decided to talk today. And he put this out on Facebook, and it's really weird because we shouldn't really care what he has to say. And I know that seems weird because he was such a vital part of the original Prime series, but essentially he threw out there today that, hey, we're, there's no way in hell you're getting a Prime Trilogy HD on Switch. It's just not happening. It's not possible, is what he's saying. And it made me wonder, why? So let's go into exactly what he said word for word. So... He said the biggest issue, and by the way, this is Michael Wilcon, for those who are wondering who the lead who the uh, lead designer was. He was the lead designer in all Metroid Prime games, uh, at least the trilogy. And he says, the biggest issue is that Retro Studios no longer has a functional editor tool to work with the Prime code base. So everything has to be brute forced, hard coded. For those who don't know what that means... Uh, brute forcing is basically where you force the code to run on engines and, and on systems that aren't intended for it, right? So it ends up being a very messy way of porting games. Sometimes it works because the hardware is, is just so much more powerful and all this that they're able to get around. I mean, to give you an idea, emulators typically work by brute force. Uh, so this is actually a well-known method in the industry, but not ideal when you're porting games officially from like the people who actually made it. So, okay, so he's saying that they don't actually have functional tools in place to even work with that code base, according to Michael Wilkin, who, I mean, he worked at Retro Studios. He would know, obviously. Next, he says, rebuilding the hundreds of interaction sets in Metroid Prime 3 alone, not to mention retuning the gameplay to take in the slower engagement pacing of conventional controls, would probably take a year with a four to five person team full time by itself. So what he's saying is converting the motion controls to traditional controls, which by the way, people said was impossible with Skyward Sword. People wondered if it was even possible with Mario Galaxy. We got both those games on Switch. Uh, but he mentions that it's different here because all the pacing of the game is built entirely around these motion controls uh, that apparently are quicker than what you can do with twin sticks. So he's saying, hey, it would take a long time with at least four to five people, like a full year. Okay. That's what he said. Now, that's just for one game, of course. Obviously, we have to worry about Metro Prime, Metro Prime 2. A little bit different since those were originally traditional control games. He goes, I'm pretty skeptical it will happen. It was straightforward to update Metroid Prime 1 and Metroid Prime 2 to motion controls. But converting Metroid Prime 3 to normal controls would be a Herculean effort. Yes, I air quoted that because we're going to get into this in a moment. As it is scripted, very specifically using volumetric triggers to detect the motion in precise manners to do specific switches, and the bosses are tuned to take into account the ease of gestural aiming. Now, that's all he had to say. Here's the thing. A lot of mumbo jumbo to basically say, hey, it would take a lot of effort to get Metroid Prime 3 on the system, let alone all three games when you don't have a way to edit the, the original code base. Here's where things get a little muddy, and this is where... I don't know why we care about what this guy said. And I'm not trying to say he has less credibility than uh, Robert Liamson, um, who put out there 
One of the original reports that Metroid Prime HD Trilogy was done back in 2018. And other major players out there that have said, hey, Nintendo is just sitting on Prime Trilogy HD waiting for them to finalize when they're unveiling Metroid Prime 4. And it's supposed to be like a dual unveil. Like, yeah, Metroid Prime 4, now get the Trilogy HD while you wait. That's supposed to be kind of like a, a, a dual reveal. So everyone's waiting. Nintendo's waiting. They're sitting on it until that happens. Much to some fans' chagrin. But I think it makes sense. You don't want to have like Prime Trilogy come out in like 2020 and then you don't even see Metroid Prime 4 till 2023. The gap between the releases is so large at that point that the Trilogy ends up not being as relevant at the time the 4 comes out. So I get it, okay? I get wanting to time it so the games kind of release, you know, within a six-month window of each other or something. But here's my thing. Here's why, even though I'd, I'd say Michael Wilcon is obviously a more reliable person because he actually worked directly on the games than, say, Robert Leitzem or, or, or others out there that have stated that this Prime Trilogy is done in, in HD. Michael Wilkin, who is claiming it takes a Herculean effort to get this Trilogy HD on Switch, Hasn't worked at Retro Studios in a decade. He left Retro Studios back in 2011. He wasn't there when Tropical Freeze was being made. Just to throw that out there. This guy, who was vitally important to the original trilogy series, hasn't worked at the studio in a decade. So why do we care what he... How do we know Retro Studios doesn't have working tools anymore? How do we know they didn't rebuild and patch and fix the tools? How do we know? He wouldn't know. He hasn't been there in a decade. There's been so much turnover at Retro Studios over 10 years. You know, we already know most of the original Prime team is no longer there. So why, why should we look at his words as this is absolute... It, we can't get Prime Trilogy HD. Pour water on fans' desires. The guy wouldn't even know. And it's funny because in his own words, he mentions a four- to five-person team would need to work full-time on their own for one year to actually port Metroid Prime 3 to traditional controls. It's been a decade. Metroid Prime Trilogy came out over a decade ago. Think about this. You don't think in a decade they could have had a team dedicated to porting Metroid Prime HD sometime in the last 10 years? You're saying that it's impossible to fathom in the last five years that Switch has had games developed for it that Nintendo couldn't have had a team of at least four to five people working on a port? And this is assuming Retro Studios is even doing the port internally. Nintendo has been hiring outside companies to port games to their system all the time. So who's to say Retro Studios is even the company doing it? They could literally have a dedicated team of 100 people at some place like Tantalus working on the port. They could have Grezzo working on the port. They have dedicated teams of more than four or five people that work on these kind of ports. So he's basically saying, hey, it's not possible, although... Actually, it would be possible. It would just take four to five people full time. Oh, by the way, Nintendo's hiring a bunch of porting studios all the time that have hundreds of employees. So why? I, I don't understand because this I, I've had several fans DM me and message me and be like, Nate, we're not getting Prime Trilogy HD. Look at this. I'm looking. I don't know why this guy's relevant anymore. I admit He's a bigger source of information, and we get some information behind the development of the games here compared to Robert Leitzman, but at the same point, who cares? He hasn't been involved with Retro Studios and the Prime Metroid series in general in a decade. This would be akin to Eiji Onomu leaving Nintendo and then a decade later telling us that, hey, you wouldn't be able to port a link between worlds to whatever console you want to port it to because the tools don't exist. How would he even know? He doesn't work there anymore. That's how crazy this is. We're talking about a guy that is so disconnected from the company, has no idea what they're doing internally. To be, oh, this is impossible. And then in saying it's, you know, very unlikely, I have severe doubt, he mentions it only takes four to five people to do it. That's not, uh, where, in what world does that sound bad? Does he really think Nintendo ports games with a single person? Oh, you let me put one person on this. Okay, the team that made Metroid Prime HD happen wasn't just four or five people. According to the development credits on the trilogy, it was a team of about 30. So if Nintendo used 30 to make the Metroid Prime trilogy originally happen back on Wii, then why the hell are we talking about four to five for just one game? They'd have at least that size team doing it again. I, 
It wouldn't take a year. That's why I'm trying to. It wouldn't even take a year. It would take six months. Get a team of fifty. Six months. I look. I don't have anything against this guy. I don't know him personally. I just don't know why he's choosing right now. Right now, of all times, to speak up. To me, to me, it makes zero sense. So I don't know. Maybe you guys can make some sense of this. I don't really think this is much of anything. Uh, yeah, I had other videos I could have made today. Actually, tune into tonight's live stream around 8.30 p.m. CT. We're going to be talking about some Zelda rumors, some Zelda 35th rumors that are making rounds that I don't understand why these kind of rumors continue to make rounds, but we'll talk about them anyways. We'll talk about, obviously, some more E3 stuff. We'll talk about um, Metro Prime Trilogy HD stuff. We'll, we'll get into all of this tonight. So I hope to see all of you guys there. Thank you so much for tuning in. And hey, if you like this video, like it, subscribe, and I'll catch you in the next video.